Good evening and welcome to another episode of On the Sofa. Um, my name is Monia and tonight I'm joined by Susan for an Hello. extra special episode. So it just so happens that this week sees the celebration of both National Tartan Day as well as the anniversary of the Declaration of our Broth. So in 1998, Alan L. Bain spearheaded the New York City Tartan Day Parade on a sidewalk in Manhattan. I'm wearing the New York City Tartan to celebrate. Looks lovely. So this was followed <laughs> by the first permitted parade in 1999, when two pipe bands and a small but enthusiastic group of Scottish Americans marched from the British consulate to the UN in their first parade, with actor Cliff Robertson as the first ever Grand Marshal. And since then, the parade has grown to include hundreds of pipers, thousands of marchers, and many more cheering from the sidelines. And Macarena has popped a photo of Cliff Robertson on the screen there for you to see. Sounds very exciting. It is, yeah. Yeah, okay. And to celebrate National Tartan Day, we're delighted uh, to introduce, very exciting, Kyle Dawson, who is the president of the National Tartan Day New York Committee. Um, So he is joining us now. There he is. Hello, Kyle. Hi. Okay, how are you? Um, thanks so much for joining us. I was wondering, could you tell us a little bit more um, about NYC Tartan Week, how it came about, and uh, about your role as president as well? Kyle, I'm really sorry. I think we're having some more difficulties with the... So sorry about that, guys. I think we're having a few technical difficulties um, with Kyle's microphone. Um, Unfortunately, I don't think his sound is coming through. So hopefully we'll figure it all out (laughs) um, because Kyle is amazing and has got a lot to tell us all about National Tartan Day, about his role as president, um, and then just a few fun facts about the parade and especially what they're doing this year um, with the virtual celebration because it's not a normal not a normal situation unfortunately so while we hopefully sort those issues um susan and i will delve into a bit of the history behind the tartan day um and the declaration of our growth as well so bear with us yes um, and we will hopefully have kyle back we're very excited yes he's our very special guest so So fingers crossed we can work (laughs) the joys of technology the joys of technology okay okay So I think we're going to try Kyle again just now. Hopefully the sound will be working. Um, And if not, then we'll... Hi, Kyle. I don't think we can hear you still. Sorry Sorry about this. It's not working. There we go. We can hear you. Can you hear us, Kyle? No. No. Oh, that's not good. Sorry, guys. No. A few technical difficulties. Yes, a few glitches. So, yeah, Susan and I will delve into a bit more about the origins of National Tartan Day. So Tartan Day actually originated in Canada, not New York City, as you might think. So the Federation for Scottish Clans in Nova Scotia um, instituted Tartan Day in 1986, um, which was to address a lack of heritage interest by young people. So following the example from Nova Scotia on December 19th, 91, in response to action initiated by the clans and Scottish societies of Canada, the Ontario legislature, sorry, passed a resolution proclaiming April the 6th as Tartan Day. 
So the federal government eventually then designated Tartan Day a national day in Canada and kept the date of April the 6th to coincide with the signing of the Declaration of Our Growth, which happened in 1320. Okay. The US followed suit on the 20th of March 1998. Uh, This resolution led to the congressional and then the presidential passing of the recognition of Tartan Day. Mm -hmm. Um, We should also mention here uh, that there have been efforts to see the entire month of April officially recognised, which would be quite a festival. That sounds very exciting. Um, (laughs) So recognised across the US as National Scots or Scots-Irish Heritage Month. Um, Currently, this is only officially recognised in certain states. So it is happening. Yeah, we are all for it. Yeah, (laughs) please. Yeah, we'd like to go. Um, (laughs) The Scottish uh, Coalition was instrumental and setting up this national platform for the observance of Tartan Day in the US. Mm -hmm. The coalition comprises of six leading national organisations who share the mission mission, of furthering interests throughout the United States. So members are Scottish Heritage, the Living Legacy of Scotland, the Association of Scottish Games and Festivals, Scottish American Military Society, Council of Scottish Clans and Association, Mm -hmm and the American Scottish Foundation. Amazing. All six. And Scotland Club are actually proud members of both the Council of Scottish Clans and Association and the American Scottish Foundation and Clans and Scottish Societies of Canada. So Macarena is telling us that Kyle is ready to join again. So fingers crossed, we'll have sound this time. So hi, Kyle. Hi, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear us? Yes, I hear you fine. <laughs> Amazing. Third time lucky. Technical difficulties of uh, videoing across the pond. And you know, it's funny. Uh, I've been having technical difficulties with my actual website for uh, NYC Tartan Week as well, which has nothing to do with my computer, but my computer's fine. Um, so yeah, lots of technical difficulties during Tartan Week this year. Very frustrating. We're hopefully all sorted yes. now. Yes. Not to worry. <laughs> We're all here now. Okay, so let's right. we'll, we'll start again. So, <laughs> so could, yeah, can you tell us a bit um, a bit more about NYC Tartan Week, how it came about, and your role um, as president? Right. Uh, so back in '98, when uh, Tartan Day was the uh, made official in uh, March 27th, I, I think off the top of my head, I don't know if that's a correct date or not. Uh, but then April 99, the first parade happened where they marched down the avenue, uh, not the avenue, down the down the side of, sidewalk to the, the UN uh, with Cliff Robertson. And then it was two years in Central Park with a permit for the parade. And then in 2002, the first parade was on 6th Avenue. And 2003, the National Tartan Day New York Committee was formed to organize and host events all around Tartan Day for what started to be like three days and has expanded to upwards of 15 to 18 days, depending on events and stuff happening. So. Wow, it's amazing. Quite a celebration across the city then. Yes. And um, so what do you love the most about um, National Tartan Day? And do you have your own favorite tartan? Um, well, I love about Tartan Day here in New York uh, is it's the, the week is really like a uh, family reunion. You end up having everyone that's been coming back for years, and you see people pretty much once a year uh, because people schedule their vacations around coming out to Tartan Week uh, in New York City. So it's like having a a reunion with all your good friends and just lots of uh, good times and fun stories of the year that's been passed and uh, stuff like that. And that's having uh, a favorite tartan uh, is difficult. I have 17 kilts. Um, <laughs> impressive, yeah. Three, it's impressive number of helps. Yes, thank you. Uh, three of which are Davidson's. Uh, one is Davidson Muted, Davidson Modern, and Davidson Ancient. Uh, then I also have a black uh, Shivet kilt that has Davidson Ancient accents on it, which is oh, just yeah. The, the the triple fringe on the side is in Davidson Ancient, and then the belt loops in the back is in Davidson Ancient. So it's like really, it's a nice little, uh, uh, nice little touch of color on the black coat, which is great. Um, but for favorite tartans, I just I have so many. I got lots on my list uh, uh, to get. Obviously, there's there's just too many to like one particular. You know, I don't know. I love them all. The New York City tartan is amazing. Um, mm-hmm. uh, the parade tartan is is gorgeous too. I love our our parade tartan. That's a, a gorgeous tartan. 
There's just so many. I don't know. <laughs> like, too many to, yeah, to yeah, yeah, I can't really pick Mind one. Mind changes daily, working yeah. in the shop and seeing them all constantly, yeah. then, yeah, I can never choose Joss. Yeah, Williams. I can imagine. You guys have to, must have tons of partner stuff for yourselves. Yeah, we've got our, our book of 500 odd. Yeah, so, so um, yeah, lot. every day you see a new tart and you're like, oh, actually, yeah. that one's maybe my new favourite. <laughs> <laughs> I pick one it is. <laughs> Um, and as we know, so this so the this year's uh, virtual celebrations are already underway. So yeah, I guess a bit different this mm -hmm. year. Um, and as far as we know, they run through till about the eleventh of April. So what's lined up, and how how can we get involved? Well, so we have lots of things uh, lined up this year. We partnered with several organizations, um, one of which, namely uh, Visit Scotland, who has been absolutely fantastic for us this year, uh, giving us partners like Allendale. Uh, Nature Preserve, uh, Kintyre Gin, uh, Johnny Walker, Princess Street. Uh, you guys are down the road from that. You have you yeah, been yeah, open? Oh, it. Not yet. It doesn't open yet, so you can't go see it. Have you seen it yet? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if it's, no. it's later this year. I think is yeah, the plan. Yeah, I think yeah. it's been delayed a little bit. Um, yeah. right. but we are directly opposite, so we're keeping an eye on them opening yeah. for a wee nice. bit. Nice. Yeah, we're gonna have a we have a big actual uh, a video from that. Uh, Princess Street location going to be shared out uh, this week. Amazing. So that's going to be, yeah, that'll be great to watch. Uh, make sure you, you tune in for that. Um, mm -hmm. We are also with uh, uh, Promote Shetland uh, gave us a video we aired earlier this week. Um, uh, stuff with the Vikings. Uh, they're just, they're great guys. Uh, the Yarl squads are awesome. They, they come over, they, they just, a bunch of really uh, uh, great people that come over. Um, St. Andrew Society of New York is doing uh, a few events on Thursday night and Saturday morning. Um, the American Scottish Foundation has some events throughout the week. Uh, the Caledonian Club also has uh, three events this week, I think, or two events. This, I think, two events this week. Uh, I should know that I'm the treasurer of the Caledonian Club, too. That's <laughs> um, I've just been busy trying to get everything else sorted that, you know, they, they do their, their events on their own. <laughs> well, that sounds amazing. So, do you do you get dressed up in uh, one of your seventeen kilts every time, uh, even if you're staying at yeah. home? I uh, I no, I'm staying at home. I'm not really dressed up. It's PJs and, and lounging on the couch. You know, comfort. <laughs> <laughs> That's the beauty of the of the virtual celebration exactly. this year, isn't yeah. it? You yeah. can uh, stay nice and comfy and cozy at home. <laughs> That's right. Plenty of whiskey. Plenty of. Uh, uh, relaxation and, and plenty of videos online to to entertain yourselves with the tartan yeah oh that's ideal definitely and yeah um in 2019 um scotland shop the scotland shop tartan team actually headed to uh the big, big apple for the first time yeah um, and moya and i weren't there ourselves personally unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> but um we know um that it's an experience that yeah those who were there will never mm -hmm. forget so and um, they are super excited to be um, hopefully going back in 2022, Kyle. Uh, so well, it's, yeah, we're, it's happening. 2022 is happening. Yes. This is going to be over by then. We'll all be back to doing our norms. It's going to be back. It's going to be back. It's going to be better. It's going to be massive. Everyone's going to want to come out. You got to come. Yes, it'll be, oh. I imagine, sort of the, the best year ever because I think everyone yes. will be um, yeah. very excited to so do the real parade times. and everything again. So. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be a, a really uh, a massive parade. I think it's going to be great. Yeah, absolutely. No, we'll exciting. need to get ourselves a wee, a wee plane ticket. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> so after, after Tartan Week, you got to go over to LA for Scott Week. So that's, that's the following week. Uh, from yeah, Week. Yeah, so yeah, there's like a continuing well, on the anyway, yeah, the just continuing on the yeah. celebrations. It's going to be a full two weeks of of celebrating Scotland. Yes, no, it's um, amazing. it's amazing yeah. how how big the celebrations have sort of turned, how how big they've become from such a small parade to yeah, sort of weeks worth of of celebrations. Well, if there's anything, the Scots are passionate. So yes, <laughs> that's very <laughs> true. Brilliant. Okay. Kyle, thank you so much for joining us. Um, uh, we got there eventually, so thanks for bearing with us while we yeah. sort of straightened out those little technical Yeah, sorry about there. the technical difficulties um, there. And we hope 
that you enjoy the rest of your celebrations yes. this month I, as well. I'm sure I will. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Thanks so Thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. Oh, so, lovely. absolutely. Thank you, Kyle, for joining us. That was really nice to have a little insight into the whole New York Tartan Week. Um, and hopefully, like we say next year, there will be a huge parade. So definitely worth yes. going when you can. But join some of the virtual celebrations as oh, well. Oh, definitely, yeah. Um, definitely. So let's get back to some of our history. <laughs> Do we know where we are? Do we know? We've, we've, we've figured out yeah. where we are. We're all we're good. good. We're good. Um, so last year, uh, well, sorry, not last year, every year, <laughs> the Scottish Coalition USA Awards, the National Tartan Day Award for Outstanding Leadership in the Scottish American Community. And last night, Emily and her marketing, marketing team actually stayed up to the very early hours. I don't know how she's not exhausted today um, to watch our friend Gus Noble, who is president of the Chicago Scots and Caledonia Senior Living, and he was presented the award for 2021. And um, you can see a photo of Gus there in his full tartan yes, Illinois looking suit, good, yeah. looking amazing. So Gus was born in Dundee, but spent much of his early life in the Scottish borders and um, growing up near our headquarters in Duns. So after graduating from the University of Stirling, he moved to Chicago, to Chicago initially working for the British Consulate General. Uh, we have actually, again, not just us personally, also because <laughs> us, not, not just us, we as, as, as a company, as a team, uh, have been lucky enough to visit Gus um, and the Chicago Scots twice in recent years, joining them for their annual Highland Games in 2019 and again for a Burns Night in early 2020. That sounds mm -hmm. like it. That would have been fun. Uh, Gus uh, looked dashing in his Illinois tartan suit last night, Emily tells us, mm -hmm. um, and we can't think of anyone more deserving. Congratulations to Gus. Yes, congratulations. Yeah. Okay, back to the origins of Tartan Day. <laughs> so, I'm going to read you something here. <laughs> For as long as but a hundred of us remain alive, never will we on any conditions be brought under English rule. It is in truth not for glory, nor riches, nor honours that we are fighting, but for freedom. For that alone, which no honest man gives up, but with life itself. So this quote that Susan has just read us, in fact, comes from the Declaration of Our Growth, although it could be easily lifted from the American Declaration of Independence. So it's not surprising then that in 2008, President George W. Bush actually signed the Presidential Proclamation, marking April the 6th as National Tartan Day. And when he did so, he made it clear that this date was significant as the Declaration of Our Growth had been used to help shape the American Declaration of Independence and that Scottish people have played major roles in founding America. So that's why I chose the 6th yeah. as the anniversary <clears throat> of the Declaration of Our Growth. So just in case you're wondering, our Broth itself is a former royal borough and the largest town in the area of Angus in Scotland. And so you've got a wee map on screen there. So it lies on the North Sea coast and some 16 miles from Dundee and about 45 miles from Aberdeen. So some viewers may have heard of and even tried an Arbor Smoky. So this is a type of smoked haddock that is a speciality of the town of Arbor. Um, and Susan does tell me yes. it's definitely worth a try. I've been to Arbor and I have dined on <laughs> an Arbor Smoky or two. And well worth it? Worth it. Very good. <laughs> Very highly good. recommend yes. um, when you can get out and about again to pop to our yeah, growth for a smoky. A smoky or two. Um, and we've got the tartan on screen there that's actually the Arbroath smoky tartan because in Scotland we've got a tartan for just about everything. Yeah, so why not? So, yeah. And it actually reflects the colours of the fish a it little does, bit. So we were it. talking so, about that yeah. earlier. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's a really lovely tartan actually. Okay, so let's, let's start I guess with the declaration. So just over 700 years ago an important document left Arbroath Abbey on a long journey to Pope John XXII in Avignon. <laughs> that document is now known as the Declaration of Arbroath. The Declaration of Arbroath is a letter dated 6th of April 1320, which was written by the barons and freeholders of Scotland who were seeking redemption in Scotland's relationship with England and with the wider world. So the letter that you can see on screen there was actually written in Latin and it was sealed by eight earls and about 40 barons. 
um, it was authenticated by seals as documents at that time were not usually signed. Um, and as you can see there, there are only about 19 seals now, um, just with time, I guess. I guess, yeah, with, um, it's a long time ago. Lost, so yeah. 19's probably quite impressive to have still well, sort of yeah. be well looked after. It's very true. Okay. So the letter was accompanied by two others, uh, one from the king himself, Robert Bruce, and one from his ally, William Lamberton, Bishop of St Andrews, <laughs> although these have also now been lost, unfortunately. So the letter's message was quite straightforward. We must be recognised as an independent country <clears throat> with its own legitimate king. Okay. The letter asked the Pope to recognise Scotland's independence and acknowledge Robert the Bruce as the country's lawful king. Despite the Scots' success at Bannockburn, Robert I had not been recognised as king by either Edward II or the Pope. At the time, the Pope desired peace between England and Scotland so that both kingdoms could help in a crusade to the Holy Land. The term Holy Land usually refers to a territory roughly corresponding to the modern state of Israel, the Palestinian territories, western Jordan and parts of southern Lebanon and southwestern Syria. The declaration sought to influence him by offering the possibility of support from the Scots for his long desired crusade if they no longer had to fear England and English, sorry, English invasion. So Robert I, who was also popularly known as Robert the Bruce, and um, that's how we generally know him today. Yes. Um, and there he is. was actually King of Scots from 1306 to his death in 1329. Robert was one of the most famous warriors of his generation, and even I would probably say today. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, and he eventually actually led Scotland during the first war of Indo Scottish independence against England. So he fought successfully during his reign um, to regain Scotland's place as an independent country and is now revered in Scotland as a national hero. See quite a few statues oh, yeah, out yeah. and about. <clears throat> So as Earl of Carrick, Robert the Bruce supported his family's claim to the Scottish throne and took part in William Wallace's revolt against Edward I of England. Appointed in 1298 as a guardian of Scotland alongside his chief rival for the throne, John Common of Badna, and William Lamberton, Bishop of St Andrews. Robert resigned in 13... 1300, yes, <laughs> because, of, because of his quarrels with Common and the apparently imminent restoration of John Balliol to the Scottish throne. After submitting to Edward I in 1302 and returning to the King's peace, Robert inherited his family's claim to the Scottish throne upon his father's death. Mm -hmm. So as we already said, um, Bruce uh, became King of Scots in 1306 and this was actually after a 14 years. 14 years struggling to assert his right to rule. A long time to be... Resilience. Yeah. That is a long time. Passion for Scotland. Indeed, yes. <laughs> um, in 1314, <clears throat> excuse me, he had triumphed over a vast English army at Bannockburn, driving out the occupying power, but English attempts to gain control of Scotland still continued. Mm -hmm. Still continued. Bruce's claim to the throne was still disputed by the English and by the papacy, uh, this enraged him so much that he refused to acknowledge letters from Pope John, which failed to address him as King of Scots. Mm. Yeah. Um, ignoring the truce uh, demanded by the Pope, Bruce besieged and captured Berwick. So it's a vital port uh, on the border between Scotland and England. Yes. Man on a mission. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> quite the reaction. Yeah. So equally crucial to Bruce's kingship was the loyalty of his own subjects. And this too was in doubt. He had seized the throne after murdering John Common, a key supporter of the royal Balliol dynasty. In 1307-1308, he had launched a ruthless military offensive aimed to wipe out the Commons in their northeastern homelands. But Bruce had gradually built up popular support through a long campaign of guerrilla warfare against the English, coupled with a political programme of bestowing lands and titles on his allies. Despite this, some Scots still believed their rightful monarch was Edward Balliol. Edward was the son of King John, who had been forced to abdicate in 1296 and died in exile in 1314, unfortunately. So Edward Balliol was poised to claim the Scottish throne with English support. The declaration alludes to this, demanding, uh, declaring that the Scots would depose any king seeking to make us or our kingdom subject to the king of England or the English. Wanted a Scottish king for Scotland. Yes, okay, mm -hmm. yes. So this is not only a dig at uh, English, uh, sorry, I'll start again. 
<laughs> this is not only a dig at English back value, it also helps justify Bruce's seizure of the crown to prevent it falling under English control. Mm -hmm. And crucially, it invites the reader to hold Bruce to his word. If he ever did yield to the English, he would be inviting his people to depose him. Um, the de Declaration of Arbroath was an important milestone. Um, it greatly improved relations with Pope John. Uh, Bruce's excommunication was put on a, uh, was put on hold and referred to him as the illustrious man Robert, who assumes the title and position of King of Scotland. Mm. <clears throat> but the English were not so easily convinced. Um, it was eight years before the Treaty of Edinburgh brought English recognition of Bruce's kingship and a temporary halt to the wars of independence. Still quite a so long still time. Still quite a while after, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh -huh. It was not until uh, 1357, so that's nearly 30 years after Bruce's death, um, that peace was finally achieved with the Treaty of Berwick. That is a long time. Yeah. Uh, until then, um, the conflict continued. Long suffering yeah. battle, then. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. So um, the surviving declaration is a copy of the letter um, made at the same time as the one sent to the Pope in Avignon. So that's now lost the original it's yeah sad um it is cared for by the national records of scotland and it's so fragile that it can only be displayed occasionally in order to ensure its long-term pres preservation which i guess fair enough makes sense yeah. um macarena uh, who is working behind the scenes tonight mm -hmm. um has kindly provided a link um in the comments um, to the National Records of Scotland website because there's a bit, there's more information and there's yeah. actually some images on there as well. Yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah. So we've got a few questions, I believe, that we can answer tonight. We do. We're back to celebrating mm -hmm. Tartan Day. Yeah. So wait, someone had asked us, um, how have we been celebrating? So, you and I, how, what, what have we been doing? <laughs> we, again, we had to get a bit creative. You might have seen Emily's um, Lego parade last year, <laughs> which I think was amazing. Yeah. Um, so this year, Susan and I gave ourselves the challenge to create our own parade. Um, so you can actually view that now on our social media channels. So we actually toured around Edinburgh yeah. and we visited a lot of local statues mm -hmm. um, because we couldn't get too many people involved. No. So we thought, thought a few statues would make up for that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you can see that on our social media. We've actually got a blog as well. If you wanted to follow our route, then That's it's good, got a wee it? map. Yep. A bit of information because we've got some some lovely statues. I mean, we'll always love Greyfriars Bobby. Yeah. So a little bit of information on some of our Definitely. statues made as well. We went to visit him, and it was a good walk around, wasn't it? Yeah, bit of a brisk Scottish day. Yes, but, um, it the didn't rain. Were up. We got our steps up <laughs> for the day. It was no, it was yeah, good. Yeah, it was good to do a little parade, even if yes. we couldn't do the big thing itself. It was good. It was good fun, and we also mm -hmm. actually. Um, had uh, a tartan team at Bake Off, mm -hmm. which is very interesting. It was good fun too. So we all had to uh, make or bake. Um, <laughs> I was going to say a cake. No, it could be. Well, I made savoury, didn't I? You savoury or sweet. So you had to yeah. bake something. Um, and it had to be tartan, but you couldn't decorate it with tartan fabric, tartan mm -hmm. ribbon. You had to. We had to get crafty and sort of make our own Yes, tartan. I think uh, it gave a lot of the team... A bit of a challenge, yeah. something I, I don't think any of us had really attempted before. Well, no, tried it before. So um, yeah, a lot of varying degrees <clears throat> of um, of creativity and different, different styles of creating tartan, which was quite interesting to see. And then we shared all the pictures on, on Monday, yes. all, the, all the images were submitted. And of course, then we ate all of our cakes. Then we ate everything. <laughs> so that's good. A <laughs> celebration. After a... After a uh, indulge in Easter weekend mm -hmm. of eggs and things then just <laughs> go more, straight into the more, cake more stuff on <laughs> Monday but that's fine that's fine yeah, so you, like they say if you pop over to our blog and um, we've got a few different a few different blogs on there about yeah. celebrating Tartan Day so well worth a look definitely so we've got another question mm -hmm. here and um, how can I get involved with Tartan Week well get involved please do and um, we have listed lots of the events going on this month um on our page um uh, which is dedicated to scottish american heritage month so again that is i think macarena has popped a yeah it's popped yeah. a note of that so head to the website and have a wee read about what you can do there's lots of and from what yeah. kyle's saying as well it sounds like there's there's a lot going on a lot of choice yeah so, yeah. so you can have a wee look on kyle's website as well for for um National Tartan Week yeah. and have a look at some of the events there and see if you can join some 
virtually which yeah. again you don't have to go to new york for this year no. which is a bonus Thank for home. for everyone over in scotland <laughs> yeah. so that rounds up this week's episode we hope you've enjoyed it and as always please do get in touch if you've got any comments or questions and we would love to hear how you have celebrated as well how you've got a bit creative yeah maybe you've made your own parade like we did yeah we'd love to so. see that or if yeah if you've not done anything yet maybe what you plan to do um yeah. please let us know or maybe you want to try and bake something to have a, to have a yeah. shot of a tart and send bake. us your tart send and us your bake. pictures <laughs> <laughs> we'd love to see if you did better than us which i don't think is hard <laughs> might not be that hard yeah my end thing got a little bit messy yeah, towards it was, the end it wasn't as easy as one thought anyway no i digress so <laughs> next week again we've got another exciting episode and we'll be on the sofa chatting with Scotland's first national chef, Gary McLean, um, about his award-winning career and his links to the McLean clan because we'll be stepping into our, our clan of the month, yes. which will be the McLean. So that is very interesting, especially if you enjoy a bit of food, yes. which we all do. So yes, we'll see you next week. And um, thank you again to Kyle. Yes, thanks so much, it was Kyle. Lovely having having a guest who yeah. is on the ground in New York I know. To talk about it. In the hub of the celebration. Exactly. So thank you again for joining us and we'll see you next week for our interview with Gary McLean. See you soon. <laughs>